Hi, my name is Frank Rivero and welcome to our new YouTube channel. This channel is dedicated to continuing education for the apprentice morticians and people who want to become a professional mortician, funeral director, or crematory operator. During these segments we are going to be walking through some of the things that we do on a regular basis. You can join us here. Uh, you can also ask questions down below if you're interested in getting any more information. Let me give you a little background on who we are. Uh, Pacific Interment Service is a mortuary crematory. We are privately owned and operated, have been since day one. I am the founder of the uh, company. I actually installed this equipment back in 1991. We're going to be doing segments that are more of a mechanical, logistical type of um, educational workshops. And let's get started. First, I'd like to introduce my son. His name is Lazaro Rivero. Come on over here, Lazaro. Say hello to the folks in YouTube land. Hello there. And Skylar Williams, who's behind the camera, he's also an employee here. Skylar, come around and leave that camera for a second. <coughs> Say hello to the folks. How are you guys doing? Good. What we're going to do today is we're going to go through the startup of an IEE, which is Industrial Equipment Manufacturing Power Pack 2. That's the machine behind me. These machines are industrial cremation machines, incinerators. Uh, there's two of them. We have this machine here. It's an auto loader. This machine actually places the box where the remains are in into the retort, which is what these are called, automatically. This saves a lot of effort on the part of the operator. It also is a safety uh, feature because we do not have to get close to the door here, which when these things are operating, will operate between 1,500 and 2,000 degrees. So the first part of this, this is a chart recorder. The reason I have this in my hand is because it is required by the Bay Area Air Quality Control Board. This monitors the machine temperature at all times and it goes on the side of the machine. You guys step over here, please. This paper goes here. This is a Honeywell chart recorder, and what we do here is we insert the chart recorder. It has three tabs, and then there's a tab in the center that holds it, and this motor in the center spins as the machine is operating. Every hour, it just goes like a regular clock would. It, goes around and lets you know exactly what temperature the machine is operating under. Every now and then an inspector shows up here, one of many that we are regulated by and they'll want to see these chart recorders to make sure that we have not operated under 1500 degrees at any time. So what I do is I set this, I look at my watch, I find the time, I go to the time on this recorder. This is a 24 hour chart. I put it right exactly in time. Close the door. This is a visual thermometer. It is digital and it tells me exactly what temperature the machine is operating under at any given moment. It fluctuates with the internal temperature. The temperature is met, met or metered by, not metered, excuse me, measured by a thermocoupler that goes in the side of the machine and sits underneath the hearth, which is the floor of the machine. This is my control panel. This is how I can both visually see what's going on and manually adjust the cremation process as needed. There's also a pollution control device here which is just a beam that goes through the stack that's up there and if the beam is interrupted by smoke it sets off an alarm which is right here and it 
automatically adjust the machine to try to address any pollution issues. So what we do here, after putting in our chart recorder, the first thing in the morning, that's the first thing I do when I'm about to start this machine. You come here, you have to turn the power off and then back on. You can hear some noises in the background here. Those are different portions of this machine getting ready to start. Now, I'm going to walk you through this before I hit the blower on because it's going to get really loud here and you might have some difficulties hearing me. So I want to get, kind of give you an overall view of what goes on here. And this is also for the benefit of both my son and for uh, Skyler. They're both young guys and they're both uh, going to be professional morticians at some point, uh, career morticians. And we want to make sure that they're trained properly. So. As you guys are watching this, they're watching it live. Um, any questions that you have would help me in any further videos and, and also just to be able to instruct our crew here on um, you know, the proper way to run this equipment. So this button here is a pollution control button. It has to be on, that's required by our regulations through Bay Area Air Quality Control Board at all times that this machine is running, including the preheat. Now this machine's been down all weekend, today is Monday, and when I start it, you will see that the temperature is gonna be somewhere around ambient temperature, give or take. It takes several days after you turn it off for all the heat to dissipate from inside the brick refractory that's in there. So when you turn this on, you'll hear a beeping, or like a loud beep, that's the noise that you would hear if the pollution alarm went off. It would make that noise and then this light would light up. It would immediately shut off the burner, turn on the heart there, which I'll explain to you what that is, and uh, turn off the throat air. The throat air is, um, well, give me a minute and I'll explain all of this to you. The blower is right here. And to turn off the blower, I'm just going to turn it on and turn it off so you have an idea how loud this thing is. That's a seven and a half horsepower pressure blower. Without that blower, you could not have combustion inside this machine. So. That's basically the sound that's going on back here in the crematory as these machines are running until the very end where they have a cool down process even when it's not cremating it cools down for a couple hours just to make sure that nothing none of the equipment that's on top all our valves and our uh, gas controls don't get damaged uh, as you're looking inside this chamber this floor is made out of refractory it's called a hot Hearth system. The floor actually has a chamber underneath and what happens is as the body is being incinerated in here the smoke and the heat is being sent back through that chamber right there the opening in the rear that's the afterburner chamber there is a burner one and a half million give or take BTU afterburner that runs all the time throughout this cremation process. That's also what we use to heat the machine. The combusted material, in other words, the, 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 the carbon burned and unburned, is going to go out through that, go down, come back forward around underneath the floor of this machine. There's a wall that separates this underneath go back around and then go back up through the stack that I pointed out to you earlier, okay? As all that's happening, what's, what's happening is that the floor is getting hot and that helps in the combustion process. There is a cremation burner, it's directly overhead here and that burner does the cremating in front but the machine itself, it's a whole system the, the, the bricks on the side along with the floor all contribute to 
the final process, which is to cremate the remains. Now, these lights, for somebody who's used to operating these, a person could walk by this machine and know exactly what it's doing just based on this panel and these lights. And I'm just going to give you a brief description. We can get into it a little bit further, maybe in a video or two down the line. We're going to show you different videos, different parts of this, the processing of the cremated remains after they're swept out. But for now, it's just a very rudimentary overview of how this machine operates. The safe run is a light that comes on immediately after I turn it on and I hit the master cycle. The master cycle, these are all timers, so they will time down and you have to be aware of this. So as you're cremating, you have to monitor the cycle, the, the master cycle, the afterburner, the ignition burner, all of these are on timers. Some of them time up and some of them time down. And what I mean by that is the master cycle, you give it, let's say, two hours, and in two hours' time, it's going to go back to zero. Okay? Where um, on the hearth air, it's a delay. So when you time it forward, when you set the, the timer, what it's doing is it's delaying the, the process or the action, and it will time itself back to zero, and when it goes to zero, it's actually on. So I know it sounds a little confusing, but after a while you get used to it, and, and it actually um, makes a lot of sense when you have a chance to run a few cases through as you're training and learning the process. So this light is the afterburner light. This light will stay on until this machine hits about, uh, and it's a high fire afterburner. These burners operate on high and low fire. So this is the high fire afterburner. This is where it's putting out about a million and a half BTUs when you see this yellow light on. Now, once it gets up above 1550, this kicks down to low fire, and you'll see that this light will go off and the temperature control light will come on, okay? This is the ignition burner for the main burner in front for the cremation. So that burner is about two feet in and coming from the top. The ignition burner is probably somewhere in the three or 400,000 BTU and the cremation burner, which is this light, will kick that same burner up to about 750,000 BTU. This is self-explanatory. Door closed, um, so this light will come on when the door comes all the way down and it's closed. And actually, the switch shows you a door closed light right about here. Okay, and the afterburner reset. Sometimes this burner will not kick in uh, right away, so you'd have to go into this panel. And there are these two boxes in here. They're flame control boxes. This one controls the afterburner. This one controls the cremation burner. If you get a reset on either one, you go to the appropriate one and you press this red button and you'll hear it click. And it takes sometimes two or three presses before it actually resets. And then that'll have this machine go through its whole clearing cycle which it has to do to make sure that the um, ignition burner or the ignition flame is on so before it dumps all the gas into the chamber. So there are a lot of safeguards and this is the brains of the operation right here on this machine. The thing that safeguards our safety and the community's safety, you know, as we're doing this job. This is the cremation burner reset. So you can see they're right next to each other. Afterburner reset, cremation burner reset. Either one of these, as you're starting this machine up, if either one of these go off, you just go in here and reset it. Wait 30 seconds. There's a purge card in there that's a 30 second purge card. And then it will begin the process again of firing up the burner. The burner is not, it's not like a, like a key like a, or a car where you would go in, turn the key and it starts. There is a safety protocol that this machine has to go through each and every time the burners come on. 
Um, door, door down, door up, blower on. That's the one that I hit, and you could hear the blower turn on. Very loud piece of equipment. And then um, blower off. The auto loader, I'm going to give you a quick view of how this auto loader works. In future videos, what we plan on doing is actually running through cremations. Now there'll be no, no body show, nothing like that. Everything, all the cremation uh, are done in boxes. It's required by law that, that the person be in a cremation container. And Lazaro, you want to go around the corner here, bring a cremation container and put it on here just so that they can get, get some idea of how this works. Now everybody that's brought into our care is put into a container like this. If they're going to be cremated, not if they're being buried or shipped or anything like that, we do all of that and it's a different protocol. Right now we're concentrating on cremation. So they will be put in a cremation container like this and then they will be brought into our morgue and we have racks in there, individual racks, and each person is set in their own container on their own rack. And they're held there until the the logistical process of the paperwork, which is extensive, and you'll meet other staff members that handle that in other videos, and they'll walk you through those parts of it. We're going to film basically the entire industry for these series. Thank you. So this machine, this auto loader, this is actually uh, one of the first prototypes of this machine when they were first designed and built by industrial equipment and engineering company, IEE. Um, who, by the way, have been assumed by a larger company, but that's stories for later on. Um, they still make these machines, by the way, and they are essentially the industry standard. It, it, even though they're you know, fancier machines these days that are internet controlled from other countries. This equipment is as good as it gets as far as, you know, human body incinerators are concerned. There's been a lot of, a lot of engineering, a lot of technology put into all of this to make this work and be able to be in a facility like this, which is right in Emeryville in the heart of a, of a you know, a medium sized town in the East Bay, uh, like Oakland, Berkeley, Emeryville area in California. So, the auto loader is a device, there's a belt here, and if I, and this control here controls the auto loader. I can also control the opening and closing of the doors, or the door, I should say, well, both doors. Um, so if I hit belt forward, that belt spins. And what I do is when we first load the box onto the conveyor belt, I always adjust the box so that it's just within maybe an inch of the door because that allows me with placement. The trick here is to get the remains placed in there so that you don't have to go in and do adjustments. Now adjustments are perfectly acceptable and they are required at times. It's just something that happens. It's part of this, this, this business. But the more I can stay with that door closed and not having to do any adjustments on the remains, the better job I'm doing here as a crematory operator. So this is just an example. I'm going to do it with the machine off so you can see the logistics of how this machine operates. But the first thing I do if I'm ready to go, and by the way, this clip here is very important because this clip holds all the legal paperwork that's required in order for me to legally be able to do a cremation. So you, if I was actually doing a cremation, you will be seeing a series of documents that are clipped here along with a steel tag that identifies that individual throughout this process. And again, in later videos, we're going to explain all that, show you some of these logistics. 
So I come here, and you can see I'm standing quite a ways away from the mouth of this thing, which can get pretty hot. I open the door. And I press loader in. The machine itself goes into the machine, or the auto loader itself goes into the machine, and the conveyor belt turns on automatically. That conveyor belt will spin and place Gently place the box into the retort. Then I come over here and I hit loader out. It automatically retracts and then I just pull the door down. And the person is inserted. Now the position of these dials is very specific when you do it, when you insert. What you want to do is you're going to delay the heart there and you're going to turn on the throat air. You want to wait till the box burns off before you turn on the cremation burner because you can overwhelm the afterburner with unburned carbon and the box produces a fair bit of unburned carbon. So you want to allow a few minutes for the box to burn off before you actually engage the cremation burner. Once you engage the cremation burner, it's going to turn this blue light on, and then a few seconds later, you'll see the cremation burner light on, and now your cremation has officially started. So I'm going to walk you through the startup, show you everything I do here to get the machine ready, and then we'll see you on the next video. Just adjusting the chart recorder wheel so that I get an accurate time on startup. I'm going to come over here, as I showed you, I'm going to turn the power off and back on. I am going to turn the pollution control on and I'm going to turn the blower on. degrees Fahrenheit, PV stands for present value. That's the temperature inside the bottom chamber there where the thermal coupler is being. Now, I'm going to turn on the master cycle. I have a safe run here. It's telling me that there's no problems with the machine. And my door is closed. The pollution alarm is going to run through a, a purge cycle. And we'll see this turn off and then the rest of the board will start to function. I'm going to turn the afterburner on, give it about two hours, give the cremation burner about two hours, or the master cycle two hours, and the afterburner two hours. On an initial startup, on a day like after a weekend when this is cold, I allow it to warm up with both the cremation burner, or the ignition burner, and the cremation burner on. So, the heart there needs to be delayed, and the throat air, which is air that's going in through the back, blowing past the afterburner, needs to be off. That just turned on, that's the afterburner. That's full power to the afterburner. In just a second, when this light goes on, you'll see that this light will turn on. This light, because it's Initially, when it cycles, it's checking its cycle to make sure it can do its job. So as long as this light's on, the throat air has to be on, and the heart there has to be off. Okay? You give it a few more seconds and you'll see.
where I talked earlier about the heart there being climbing down. It's actually when it starts as opposed to starting when you turn the timer. That's called a delay. So the heart there delayed. Now the initial burner is going to kick in for the cremation burner. That's that blue light. And 